Hello everyone and welcome to another UFC review. Why do I sound drunk? I haven't been drinking. Uh, yeah. So we head over to um, the Centro de Formajo Olimpica de Nordeste, or do Nordeste in Fortaleza, Brazil. The the last two words are the only ones I pronounced correctly uh, for a UFC fight night. Vitor Belfort against Kelvin Gastelum as the main event, so let's just get right in, uh, right into it. So we start off with the first fight of the prelim card, Michelle Brazeres against Josh Berkman. Uh, I will apologize in advance, by the way. I I didn't really pay attention to too many fights on the card, so uh, you will have to forgive me. But yeah, this was a pretty good fight. Uh, Brazeres won by submission after getting... <sighs> God. After catching Berkman in an off south joke. First time in a long time I've seen that joke applied. Give me a second. Oh god. I do love Cooper. Yeah. Basically this review would just be me telling you the results except for I think one fight that I really really liked. So uh, yeah. um, really well done to Prezeras. The way he took it I do remember was really good because he made he managed to reverse the takedown, I think, then took the back. Then Joshman, uh, Joshman, Josh Bergman rolled onto his back, and uh, Preserves was able to sink in the joke, so well done him. Next up, we have Joe Soto against Rani Yaya. This is a really good pick for Fight of the Night for me. This is actually a very, very exciting fight. Uh, there was a lot of really good back and forth action, especially with Soto. He landed some pretty good strikes, but he managed to kind of knocked down Yaya, even though most of the times he was knocked down, it was a slip. Uh, I think it was in the second round, actually, where they, where Yaya was trying to dodge and counter a combo from Soto, but they clashed heads, and aesthetically, Soto looked the worst off, because he had a really nasty cut on the, on his hairline, on the left side here, and blood just instantly started spurting out. It was really nasty, and Despite the fact that so much blood was coming out and covered all, most of the left side of his face, it didn't go into his eye, which was pretty, um, I, I thought that was kind of cool, to be honest, because you re really don't see that that often, although the ref obviously did stop the fight partially due to the cut and due to the clash of feds. Uh, also, the referee was female, the first female referee since Kim Winslow, her name's Camilla Albuquerque, I think she's, only, I think she's Brazilian, so we'll only see her over there. Maybe we'll see her over here. Also, I want to talk about the referee shirts again, this time changing to a more not Brazilian theme. They're still the black and white, but they've got like the CAB MMA, which is like the something something Brazilian mixed martial arts thing. So I think that's what that means. Oh god, this is this is a train wreck, it really is. But yeah, this is actually a really fun fight. Uh third round is pretty much all Soto, I believe. Though there, there was actually a lot of moments where I also almost finished the fight, but uh, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, fortunately for Yaya, he managed to hang out until the final bell. Or horn, rather, because they don't have bells in the UFC. And... <clears throat> and it was a good performance, so... Well done, and obviously Soto won by your decision. It was a close you know, decision, though, to be fair. Yeah, let's move on. Next up is unfortunately a fight I do remember quite a lot about. Um, Sergio Moraes against a uh, newcomer named Davi Ramos. And oh god, this was a boring, 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 boring fight. They. It was stand up all the way through except for one takedown that Moraes got in the third round, I think. And nothing happened. The biggest shot I think landed was a strong overhand right from Moraes in the first round. Uh, it was a whole lot of nothing. Moraes did manage to come with good combos and managed to get in and out. And Ramos counted fairly well. But if, uh, it was just a really shit fight, to be honest. It, it was difficult to watch. But Moraes managed to get the win uh, by, I believe it was decision? Yes, uh, you know, it's one at that. So, yeah. Let's move on.
to the last fight of the prelim card. And lastly, we get to Francisco Trinaldo against Kevin Lee. This is a pretty good fight, uh, especially considering the fact that Kevin Lee kind of came in as a villain, because at the weigh-ins, I only know this from the commentary, uh, apparently he flipped off the Brazilian crowd. Yeah, not exactly endearing himself to them. Uh, also, another thing, another thing I forgot to mention is that they brought up the weather a couple of times for this event, and it was apparently 82, degree, 82 degrees outside, the humidity was like around about 87%. Inside, it felt like 92 degrees, and later on, 95. It must be absolutely bloody boiling hot in that place. Then again, it is Brazil. It is known for being quite warm. So, uh, yeah, Kevin Lee managed to, despite pissing people off, he managed to win in the second round with a good rear naked choke. In the first round, like, Trinaldo kind of bullied him. Tr Trinaldo, sorry. I don't know where Trinaldo came from. So good. So, so good. My reason to live. One of them, at least. Uh, yeah. Kevin Lee, despite kind of being bullied in the first round, managed to just get a good re naked joke at some point in, the, in round two. I don't remember when, but he got it. And he sunk in the joke, and he won. So that's cool. So, uh, yeah, that's it for the prelims. Let's move on to the main card. Next up was a rematch between Ale Alex Oliveira and Tim Means. Um, the last fight ended in a DQ after Tim Means landed a knee on Oliveira while he was still a downed opponent. Uh, so, this was before they implemented the new rules, but then again, one of Al Oliveira's knees was actually on the ground, so he was an actual downed opponent, not just like, I put my hand down, you can't hit me with a knee even if my knees are on the ground. You know, that thing that really fucking annoys me. <sighs> but yeah, um... It was a pretty good rematch. Uh, there was a lot of really, there was a lot of wrestling in the first round. I wasn't expecting that, considering that Tim is known for striking. He landed a few uh, good combos, but he uh, he unfortunately, I, th I think it was when he went for a takedown, and sorry about my yawning. Uh, yeah, he went for a takedown, and I believe Oliveira just managed to reverse it and get a really naked joke at some point. Also, I think, yeah, I believe that's, that's something I forgot to bring up in the Yaya fight. He went for way too many takedowns in round round two, which is what kind of led Soto to win most of round three. I also forgot to mention the headbutt thing. Like I, I brought it up, and I know that I brought up the fact that Soto came off worse because he had a cut, but that was more aesthetically... In terms of how they were feeling afterwards, I'd definitely say Yaya came off worse because he was wobbling a lot after after that hit him, but yeah. Uh, what fight was this again? I'm so sorry. This is an absolute train wreck of a video. Uh, Oliveira versus Means, yeah. Oliveira won by Rene Choke in the round in, in the round two. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> and also I believe Joe Soto went for a north south choke like uh, Prezaris did against Berkman. I'm bringing that fight up, why am I bringing that fight up? But yeah, Oliveira, well done. Tim Means, mm, you know, I like Tim Means a lot, so he's got another chance. So let's move on to the next fight. Next up was Betchko Hair against Marion Renault, who's 39 years old. Oh, also, I forgot to mention another cool fact um, bringing up with the referees earlier. This was, this event to the day is like, this is 23 years now that John McCarthy has been a referee for the UFC ever since his first appearance at UFC 2 way back in 1994 on, on March 11th. That is an absolutely brilliant milestone. Well done to big John McCarthy. You know, best ref ever. He doesn't look that old, does he? He looks actually really good for his age. <sighs> anyway, yeah, better go here against Mario Renault. Once again... Not the best fight. It was a lot more exciting than Marais against Ramos. I'll give it that. This was actually a pretty exciting fight, but it wasn't... <sighs> you know what I mean? It wasn't, like, something that truly popped out at me. There was a lot of good moments in it, though. Uh, mostly the moment where Renault rocked Cohair, which no one was really expecting. Uh, there was a lot, of, a, a lot of back and forth, and Renault mostly managed to actually get uh, round three. But despite how well she did in the third and final round... Uh, she only got one judge's vote, but the other two would called it a draw. So this fight ended a majority draw. 
I don't know how I feel about that. Like draws to me are a lot more difficult to call than uh, fall on decision wins. I, I don't know. I feel like they both did a lot of back and forth, but I feel like if Renault did Renault did enough in the third round, then she should have won based on that. Because that has happened before. But what do I know? So yeah, it was a it was it was a pretty good performance all in all. But uh, a good performance. It was it was a good fight. Not not the greatest, but it was kind of exciting, so yeah. Next up is Juice Formiga against Ray Borg. Uh, I like them both. I like Ray Borg a little bit more. And he won by an decision, which is good. A whole of a lot of wrestling in this fight. A whole of a lot of a lot. There was a lot of uh, cage work, especially a lot of clinch work. I think Borg had more strikes in, but I think the main thing was the fact that Borg... Um, oh, I just remembered something. The Oliver uh, means fight at the end of the first round. Uh, means was actually going on top of Oliver, and as he was getting back, Oliver struck back with some up kicks after the bell sounded. It was like, no, you can't. But well, the horn went off. It's like, oh no, you you can't do that. That's after the bell. Horn. Why? Oh god. My what is wrong with my head today? Ugh. I mean, d don't answer that. <laughs> Yeah. The yeah, it, it wasn't a bad fight and Rayborg won, which I'm always yeah, I'm always okay with. He's he's a good fighter. So yeah, we're just gonna move on before this gets any worse. Edson Ed Edson Barbosa came back against uh De Benil Dariush. Oh my head, why? Oh, I'm so sorry for this video. I really, really am. This is and, and me apologizing is making it sound worse. Yeah, fight, 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 the fight. It was pretty good. Um, there was a there was a fair bit of back and forth, but I think Barbosa definitely got the better combos. He definitely landed uh, much harder strikes in round one. Then round two, he managed to bait uh, Darius into a pretty good trap and countered with a, just a gorgeous looking standing flying knee. Oh, excuse me. A really cool looking standing flying knee. Not Dariush. Well done. I should mention the fact that, like, because uh, I always pull up the Wikipedia page when I do UFC reviews. Um, normally I would tell you if there's performance or not, final night bonuses, but they haven't been added yet. So, yeah. But I definitely give this one performance of the night as well as, oh, maybe Oliveira. I mean, those are uh, both pretty good. Uh, yeah. Well done too. Well done. But I'll give Fire the Night to the next fight. Oh, yes. And that next fight was Mauricio Shogun, who are returning after quite a while away against John Volante. And Shogun won in the third round by knockout. But it was a really, really damn good fight up until that point. Both fighters got rocked quite a bit. I believe uh, Shogun managed to get more knockdowns over Volante. But Volante is a tough fighter, and he's one I quite like in the light heavyweight division right now. Uh, he managed to tough it out a lot longer than I thought he would, uh, which is why which is why I like him. But Shogun eventually managed to get the better of him, and, and uh, you know, going against the cage landed, opened up with some really good boxing combos, especially to the body as well. There's some really good use of body shots in this fight and body combos. Uh, yeah, he uh, you know he eventually managed to fell Volante. Not necessarily a knockout, but more of a TKO where, like, you know, they're standing and blocking, but they get punched hard enough and they just droop like that. You see it all the time. So you know what I'm on about. Uh, yeah, well done to Shogun. He's an absolute legend in the sport. Former UFC Light Heavyweight Champion, and he's still going strong. So. Uh, yes, moving on to the main event now. And then we move on to the main event of the evening. Beto Belfort against Calvin Gastelum, and pretty much to everyone's surprise, Calvin Gastelum won. I don't think a lot of people were expecting this to happen. It just further proves the fact that he does belong better as a middleweight than he ever did as a welterweight, because as a welterweight, he obviously he missed weight a lot, and that caused him a lot of his fight purse, and obviously because he missed welterweight, the weight cut for that class so many times, he uh, 
he was he was basically told by Dana, you're not allowed to fight at welterweight again. So he just moved up to middleweight and has been kicking ass ever since. Did a really good job here. Managed to like he managed to knock down Vitor a few times. And Vitor still got his speed. You know, he still got despite being damn near forty. He's gonna be forty next month, actually. I think. Uh, yeah, he he did a good job, but Gaslam was just a little bit quicker and a little bit better and managed to get the TKO victory after knocking down uh, Belfort with a really good combo and then finished him and it was good uh, so well done to Gaslam probably another pick for, for performance of the night because they've given three out before and now they have so um, yeah that's it for this year so review all in all the card wasn't the most exciting but it was good it was good enough and it wasn't at least it wasn't UFC 209 but then again, at least UFC 209 wasn't UFC 208. I hate UFC 208. That was so terrible. Oh, God. But, yeah. It, it was a decent card. Like, bolstered by a pretty good crowd and good refereeing. Uh, just let down by uh, some kind of boring fights and just fights that I don't think many people really cared about. But it wasn't horrible. I, it was. It was. It was good. It was. It was good. You know. So that'll about do it for this review. Uh, I'll see you again tomorrow because I have my Cage the Elephant episode of backtracking. Uh, I'm looking forward to that, to be honest. And hopefully, I won't be as much of a mess as I am today. I don't know why I am this way. Like j just today. Uh, I haven't had a bad day or anything. I've actually had a pretty good day. Uh, jelly beans. I'll see you all tomorrow for the next backtracking episode. Take care.